Okay, there we go. Hi, everybody. I'm Kelly Keith, Director of Study Abroad in the Office of Study Abroad. We're about to start our presentation, just doing um, some introductions. I'm Seth Huntington. I am a Study Abroad Advisor in the Office of Study Abroad at Webster Groves. Hi, I'm Jenny Sowerby. I am working in the Student Resource Center in the campus in Vienna, and I'll also be your Study Abroad Liaison uh, during your time in Vienna. Good evening. Uh, my name is Samuel Schubert. I am the Associate Director, Vice Rector of the Webster Vienna Private University here in Austria. I oversee all the academics and thus the programs that the students will take. Great, thank you. So yeah, and um, we're really excited that you guys have joined us today to learn more about opportunities at the Webster Vienna campus um, this upcoming summer. So we're going to give you an overview of what it's like to um, you know, study abroad in Vienna, what opportunities are there in the summer, and then go into um, a bit more about our different option, academic options in the summer. Um, and then there'll be plenty of time for, for questions at the end too. So what I was gonna do is go ahead and share my screen because we do have a presentation today that we wanted to, to share with, with you all. You guys see that okay? Okay, great. All right, so um, summer in Vienna is what we're here to talk about. So here we go. So we wanted to just start off just showing you a picture um, so you can kind of start to visualize what your time in Vienna might look like. This is actually a picture of our campus building. Um, and our campus has been, um, we've been in existence for over 40 years now. And I think in this particular campus location since 2014, um, but we are very centrally located in the second district in Vienna. Um, in our classroom, um, our space is one large building that actually has four floors, um, has everything you need right, right there. Um, but we wanted to kind of start to, you know, off the presentation by transporting you to Vienna on a sunny day um, in the summer. So here you go. And then um, just willkommen. So um, this is just a map of Europe. You can see where Austria is located. It's very central in Europe. It's a great platform to other countries in Europe. It's got a, a number of neighboring countries, Germany, Italy, um, Czech Republic, um, Switzerland, to name a few. So if you want to travel, um, you've got a lot of neighboring countries and then a lot of exciting places to also go within Austria. And it is a German speaking country. Um, so if you have been studying German, you'll get to use that. Or if you don't know any um, you'll definitely get a chance to learn some while you're there, but English is also very widely spoken in the country. Great. I'm, I'm going to okay. turn this over to Jenny. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, as Kelly said, uh, whilst you are in Vienna, you'll be studying in the beautiful Palais Wenkheim. Um, this is a really fantastic building that was built in 1826. It used to belong to one of the, um, the higher families in Vienna, but um, after the war, it was handed over to the state, I believe. And yeah, we've been there since 2014. The building is fully renovated. It has beautiful views of the Praterstrasse. This is a, a very famous street in Vienna and leads to um, our very, very famous kind of theme um, theme park called the Prater Park with the very famous um, wheel that uh, you can visit in Vienna. Uh, the building is state of the art. We have fantastic resources, um, recording studio, all kinds of great spaces uh, for creating, for learning, um, a Mac lab. Uh, yeah, and it's just beautiful. It's a really breathtaking space. Um, and whenever our study abroads come, it's always fantastic to see them walking into the atrium. You can see that in the picture on the left and on the right. It really is a beautiful, bright space. Should we move on to the next slide? So our students will be living in District Living this summer. This is a new location for us um, and it's in the Donaustadt area of Vienna. So it's quite a new part of the city um, and it's where the UN building is housed. Uh, it's a really fantastic area, a lot of international um, 
people living around here, a lot of brand new uh, great spaces for co-working. Um, and as you can see, the space that you'll be living in is really beautiful. Uh, it's a self-contained studio with a hot plate and microwave. So uh, there's an opportunity to use a shared kitchen if that's something you'd like that has bigger resources, ovens um, and stuff like that. But you will have your own studio space so you can be self-contained. It's about 15 square meters, so pretty small, uh, but it has everything you'll need for the time that you're there, including double bed, including private bathroom. Um, and the views are spectacular. So you'll be in um, one of many of the tall buildings in this space um, and you'll look out uh, maybe onto the Donau, which is the river that runs through the city. Um, some of the most amazing churches that you'll see. It really is a wonderful building. It also has a secret garden um, uh, as part of the complex uh, that you can rent out for barbecues, for parties. Uh, there's a yoga studio, a gym, a rooftop bar even. It's a really, really cool space. Uh, and yeah, You'll have like cleaning services too. Like we do expect you to clean yourselves, but uh, it is a service department. So that's also a great uh, part of staying there. Um, and it's just a few stops away from campus on the U-Bahn. That's our underground um, rail system that we have here in Vienna. It's a very easy, fast stop, about a four minute walk to the uh, hotel from the uh, rail station and then on the other side just a two minute walk into campus so um, you'll be there in about 15 minutes but you can also walk too it's a really lovely walk uh, again with a lot of beautiful nature to see and uh, you can walk over the river and catch the sight of the UN buildings which are particularly impressive can we move on yeah sorry uh, and why should you choose Vienna? It's been voted year in, year out, one of the best places to live in the world. Um, it's a particularly international city, as I said, with a lot of NGOs, uh, international organizations finding home here. Um, it's really a very, very safe space. I moved here six years ago and I was so surprised just how safe it is. Um, walking around at night, you feel comfortable. Uh, it's really just a beautiful, wonderful place. There's a lot of uh, fantastic in in uh, initiatives from the state um, with a lot of free concerts going on. Vienna is known for its music um, and you can catch the Philharmonic Orchestra playing in the museum district for free. Uh, there's a lot of great live music throughout the summer. Um, it's really, really fantastic. And as you can see from this picture, the uh, city has kind of kept itself um, protected since the uh, Middle Ages. Uh, there was some damage in World War II, but the buildings remain stunning, beautiful, and very, very iconic. Um, as I said, it's a city where old meets new, where you'll be staying in Donaustadt. This is a brand new complex, but you'll also experience um, the ancient buildings and those uh, built hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Yeah. Other great reasons to study abroad in Vienna, as we said, the location is right in the heart of Europe. Um, we're actually more far east than Prague. Uh, so we're pretty far east when it comes to uh, the buildup of Europe. Um, and we have some fantastic connections to other countries. We're very close to Budapest, very close to Prague, uh, close to Germany, of course, with our German speaking language. Um, so you can visit all sorts of places uh, very, very easily by train by flight. Um, the quality of life in Vienna is particularly fantastic. Uh, it's been voted again the best city to live in for the 10th year in a row and a big part of this is our public transport system. Uh, the public transport is particularly efficient, fantastic um, and inexpensive. So for a semester in Vienna students pay about 75 euros for public transport and this includes all buses, all trams, all underground trains um, and local trains as well. Uh, and this means that you can travel freely around the city as you like. Everything has full disability access as well, which is fantastic. Um, and you can really see the breadth of the city. Uh, we have a lot of fantastic green space, a lot of beautiful parks that are curated by the city. Um, but also uh, we have the famous Vienna forests. It's great to visit if you like spending time out in nature. 
Um, Vienna is also known for its winemaking, and there's a lot of fantastic winemaking uh, places to visit, uh, different wineries that you can see, and also all of the fields that where the wine is growing. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. Um, beer is also very popular here. It's brewed all over the city too. Um, and if that's something you'll enjoy, then there's the opportunity to taste a lot of uh, local delicacies too. Um, music is also something that we're really well known for here in Vienna. Beethoven spent a lot of his time here and Mozart. Uh, this is a picture of the Mozart statue in the park uh, in Burgarten, I think. Um, on our Stadtpark. There are so many parks of Vienna and they are all really wonderful. Um, but yeah, again, you can catch so many wonderful uh, performances. There's a lot of free and live performances, uh, but also we have a fantastic opera scene and the opera season runs throughout most of the year. Uh, but you can also catch many really interesting uh, performances. There are a lot of other art universities in the city. So um, there are a lot of student performances too, and there's great ways to get involved in performing um, and visiting music uh, as you arrive. Oh, can we move to the next slide? Um, another fantastic reason to study in Vienna is the history of psychology in the city. I'm sure you all will have heard of Freud before, but he made his home in Vienna or he was from Vienna uh, before escaping uh, to London after World War II. But yeah, it's known as um, the birthplace of a lot of important psychological theories. Uh, and you can really see that throughout the city. You can go visit uh, Freud's old apartment I've been there it was really quite cool very small very tiny um, but it's really amazing to be in such a historical important place for psychology um, as you can see here this is a uh, the uh, glass house from the Chambron Palace the city is full of a lot of different palaces um, so you can kind of go see one uh, every week whilst you spend your four weeks in Vienna um, and it's really a wonderful a wonderful area to kind of spend time in nature and uh, in the city. Another fantastic thing that Vienna offers, unfortunately, we're not on the coast, but there are a lot of opportunities to go swimming, wild swimming. Uh, we have the river here and a lot of lakes um, and every district has its own pool to enjoy. So if the weather is warm whilst you're here in Vienna, usually temperatures range from about 25 to 35 degrees centigrade during the summer. So it gets pretty warm. Um, up to 40 sometimes. Uh, but yeah, spending time in nature, swimming in the in the river, uh, you know, it's a really, really wonderful thing to do whilst you're here and all accessible by public transport. Um, coffee culture is also something pretty unique to Viennese culture. Uh, Viennese people are known for being a bit grumpy. And one thing they want to protect at all times is the coffee and cake culture. So um, there's a lot of really wonderful historic cafes in Vienna uh, where you can order a slice of Sachertorte, just like this one. It's a chocolate cake with some uh, apricot jam inside. Very delicious, served with cream. Um, and you can sit, order a coffee and kind of sit and read a newspaper, read a book for hours on end. You're kind of expected to sit and chill in the cafe as long as you like, yeah? Uh, and this is very much the vibe on, a, on an afternoon in Vienna, just to chill in a cafe and spend a lot of time there. Um, so there's a lot of different kind of local coffees to try out. Vienna is really known for its coffee. Uh, and I would say we have a really, really great selection if any of you are coffee nerds like me, uh, that might be something that you want to get into whilst you're here. Um, summer in Vienna, as I said, there's a wide range of music festivals and operas. Um, you might not know this, but we have our own island in Vienna inside the Donau River, the Danube. Um, and during the summer, over three days, there is a free music festival. Uh, and this is really a fantastic experience to check out the music scene, um, the more modern music scene in Vienna. Um, and party it's a really great space to have fun um it's also in a beautiful natural space really really cool free experience um yeah again explore the green spaces uh explore the vineyards um all these parks they're all free to enter 
um, and they really are wonderful. Um, you can also take weekend trips to neighboring cities. Everything is connected very uh, efficiently with the train service um, and trains are pretty inexpensive. There's also uh, buses, which are even more inexpensive. Um, and yeah, you can easily check out all the things to see in Vienna uh, and in the surrounding areas. We're known for skiing, but that also means that we're known for hiking. If that's something you're interested in, uh, you can definitely come and check out some of the really wonderful hiking locations. Um, there are a lot of kind of uh, old houses up in the mountains and you can go stay there kind of like a hostel um, and spend some time hiking if that's something you're interested in over a weekend um, in the summer. Great. Thanks, Jenny. Thank you. So I was shall, just uh, shall I jump in? Oh, sure, Sam. Go ahead. Yeah. So um but before I continue, I just wanted to ask all of you look rather young and I, I feel rather old. So I, I just want to to know, is everybody here in the in the meeting? Are are you in the US? And am I correct to say that you're all under the age of 40? Okay, good. Uh, so I just want to uh, hit a couple of points before I talk about the program structure about Vienna. Um, that That's rather important because I, I have been here on and off here. I used to work at those buildings that you're referring to of the UN. Uh, and I was here before the Cold War actually ended. So I have a pretty good feel for how this city has changed and how it has grown younger over time in particular. And that is, is one of the most important things. Um, the city is technologically very advanced. So wherever you are in the US, you will be surprised, if not even shocked, to find the performance of the internet, telephony, all sorts of communications, video, all the stuff that is available throughout the city and free. Uh, widely available and, and free uh, broadband. Um, in addition, of course, the organizations that are here, you hear of all the time in the news, the IAEA, the International Atomic Energy Agency, the OSCE. Um, it's been mentioned, Freud and and, and the, the psychology question, but there is quite a music culture here, quite a hip hop culture and quite a, um, a party culture. You mentioned beer and wine. It's important to mention that, you know, beer can be served to a 15-year-old and wine can be served to uh, a 15-year-old or a 16-year-old. And uh, you can pretty much go to any bar you want. So uh, for anybody that wants to go out in the city, not that one promotes that, but that is the way life works here in Central Europe. Uh, and... Uh, Spending half my time in the house in the mountains, I can highly recommend uh, being able to get out of the city as well. Great transport, great connections. As you know, the Olympics are going on in Paris uh, during the summer. Uh, and so they've also built uh, high-speed train routes in and out of the country uh, here that, that, that head to Paris as well as elsewhere. So on that note, let me switch to the to the program and to the program structures. Uh, the courses or the programs that we're offering, uh, there are five altogether. Uh, one in arts, two in music. Uh, well, two in music of which two are in psychology, so it's one and a half of each, and um, one on on communications, on uh, public relations, and things of that nature. So the the program which has been been worked out are two sets of of four weeks worth of courses. There are in these four weeks of courses, there are roughly uh, thirty two hours, or exactly thirty two hours you'll spend in a classroom, and a, a large amount of time you will do outside of the classroom going to other events. Uh, there is one kind of primary course, which will be three credits, and one additional course, which, say, in the case of psychology, is a laboratory exercise where you're working with all sorts of cool 
technology, you know, that measure the brain and the eye and all that, if it's in the psychology area, uh, or it's working uh, in, in the music or an art area. So uh, there's quite a bit of co-curricular activities going out in the city. So you get good guidance, you get uh, to see a lot in the city as part of the courses. Uh, and that's also why there is the fees for for those particular programs that cover cover those entrants. And of course, it's possible to do one four week session in Vienna and then do another four week session. So in theory, you could even do eight credits if you want. So we can go on to the uh, next slide. So the first one is uh, Vienna, the capital of music, uh, which is essentially two courses. So one primary course is on the history of music, the musical scene that goes back to classical music, of course, but also looks at some of the more modern uh, music and contemporary music and the contemporary music scene. And then of course, a course which is really dedicated to looking at the musical scene that's going on in the city. That can be classical, that can be opera, depending on your tastes, and, and I, I don't know them, of course, uh, but you can, you'll, you'll find uh, all sorts of summer concerts going on in the city of various different uh, genres. Next slide. So uh, this is one of my favorites, uh, Sax in the City. And we spent a lot of time with this class. We've offered it, uh, I think, almost three years running. Uh, it's focused primarily on the psychology of sex and psychology of sexuality, uh, as opposed to the sociology of, 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 of sex, which Vienna is rather famous for, of which Freud uh, made his money and his, his career based on. And... Uh, what you will see in, in this course is kind of not just a, a history, but also an understanding of, of, of the different cultural and psychological meanings that are placed on sex and sexuality. Um, and you'll get tours around the city, you'll see different places and environments. And, you know, depending on where you come from in the United States, middle of Central Europe, is a very different culture, let's say, from from a sexuality standpoint uh, than than is typical in, in in many parts of the United States. Um, I come from Chicago, and even in comparison to Chicago, Vienna is a, a a very special place in that regard. So, to the next slide. So, the Global Art Program is also in a very similar way, designed really for people in art uh, and who are artists. Uh, you'll meet up with professional artists and of which there are many. I think one of the things that are not known or understood about, about Austria is that the city of Vienna pays more money to art and art projects, that means to artists getting grants, than uh, on an annual basis than the entire uh, budget for the National Endowment for the Arts of the United States, right? So you can imagine that all of the money that's put out in the U.S. for the whole of the country is given out to artists in Vienna. Not necessarily good artists, but artists, right? So if you're an artist, this is a great place to be. You even have a special insurance status as an artist, uh, which which gets you, you know, the top quality medical care uh, at, at Peanuts. So this is a city that loves its art uh, and it really promotes it. It's everywhere uh, in all its forms from the, the, the old to the very, very modern, uh, including performance art. So next slide. Uh, and the music cognition is the course that it focuses on the psychology of music, right? And the psychology of sound and how that affects us. So not just understanding music from an artistic, emotional sense, but also understanding how it affects us, how it affects communication, 
um, how it is is performed and is taught by by Juta Street, uh, who who comes here also from Campbell University with her with a collection of her own students as well, uh, which is a, a, already a tradition in its in its third year. And we're very very happy uh, to welcome her back for that. And the next slide. And then finally, we have the uh, bacon and eggs, uh, which is a, a focus on media and communications. And it's interesting. Uh, I'm not a media man myself, but uh, it is very interesting when we were putting this together to talk about how the, the notion of public relations um, came to be actually in Vienna. And it came to be in coffee houses and it came uh, to be with ideas from, from the people that were here. You will visit uh, the cafes and places where those people originally put those ideas together and the connection between where that birth was created and how that has come to where we are today, including all its stops along the way, whether we're talking only about uh, say fake news or all sorts of videos or TikTok or trends or things going viral, but also as media really became a thing, where mass media became a thing, where promoting ideas became a thing um, with unfortunately very negative consequences um, politically in World War II. So uh, that is the, the main focus of, of our courses altogether, five different packages. And, and of course, uh, you could take one set in June and another set in July. Uh, almost all of our classes will run from Monday to Thursday. Uh, I think there is one exception, but for the general part, they will run from Monday to Thursday, allowing you to take off from Friday to Sunday if you wanna go anywhere, uh, of which, as I said, Vienna is an incredibly central location. So you're by, by train very quickly to a number of places, by plane, you're in Rome in an hour, in Paris in an hour and a half. Uh, so you can pretty much get anywhere and everywhere. So I will stop there unless you have any questions. Great. Um, and I have just a couple more slides and then we can complete, I'll stop sharing the presentation then we can just move into questions. That works for everybody. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Jenny. Um, just a few quick, quick um, kind of wrap up items, um, other things to consider when deciding whether or not to study abroad um, this upcoming summer. Um, we do have some information here on program costs. So if you saw when Dr. Schubert was talking about the um, different thematic programs we have, they each had a program fee associated with them. And that was to cover those um, co-curricular opportunities. So things like, you know, going to museums, visiting cafes, those kinds of things. So that's what that's why those are different for each program. Um, the tuition cost in the summer is $500 per credit hour. Um, and then so four, four, four credits would be um, $2,000 for overall tuition per session. And then the housing is um, $1,320 per session. And then we also have a study abroad fee that's $300 that covers um, costs for, it's primarily for international health insurance through GeoBlue, um, but it does have some other travel um, items. We give everybody a travel adapter, for example. Um, so it does come with kind of a package of, of study abroad items too. So those are all your program costs. I do recommend also, if you're not a Webster University student, if you're a student from a WINS partner institution, um, check in with your study abroad office on costs. They might have other things. Um, they might have you pay a slightly different tuition fee. So just check in with your study abroad office um, to make sure you understand all of the costs. Um, scholarships. So um, Webster does offer a couple different awards to help with airfare. So we have the WINS Award if you're um, a Webster International Network of Schools student. Um, we do have an airfare award. Um, it's $500 in the summer. The only caveat with that is you have to be doing both, both sessions in order to be eligible for it, um, not just one session on its own. And then we do have the Webster World Traveler, which helps Webster students with airfare costs. Um, and then there are other, but other study abroad scholarships. So we have, if you're a Webster student, we have a number of endowed scholarships that you can apply for. 
Um, if you're not a Webster student, definitely check your school to see if they have anything available. A lot of schools have some of their own awards. And then there's national study abroad scholarships too that you can definitely look into, or sometimes there's even locally based ones as well. On our study abroad website, webster.edu slash study abroad, we have a list of national awards and you're welcome to, to check through those if you would like. Um, the application deadline is February 28th. So um, we're about a month out. Um, so now is a great time to start working on your application, start preparing that. Um, like if you have any questions about working on the application, uh, Seth and myself are both based at the St. Louis Office of Study Abroad. So we are always happy to meet with you, answer any emails, talk on the phone, do Zoom meetings, anything that would help the cause. So or in person too, if you're in St. Louis. So just let us know. And the application process, um, there are a few things that we ask you to do. We ask you to like upload a copy of your passport. It's okay if you don't have it yet, but we would wanna see that you've applied. Um, we ask you some things about your preferences, like for example, what program you would like to do um, in, in terms of the thematic program that you're planning to, to attend and um, just a few, a few other items, but it shouldn't take you very long to complete. And we can go over that process with you in more detail. Yeah, and that's just thank you. So thanks for taking the time out today. We appreciate it. Uh, again, here's the contact information for the Office of Study Abroad. We're in the School Communications Building. If you're a Webster student in Spiridrop 207, we have a general email worldview at webster.edu. We check that multiple times a day. We can, we'll always get back to you right away. Um, and then our, our phone number as well. So feel free to use any of those um, as, you, as you would like or need. And then I'll go ahead and stop sharing just to see if we have any questions. And then I'm also going to stop the recording as well.